Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Works on Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to perform a USB BAS flashback on the MSI Z790 Gaming Plus Wi Fi. This is a pretty straightforward thing to do and not entirely necessary, but certainly I think it's worth doing if you've got a new PC with DDR5. There are some issues with stability and those kinds of things, and also there are security issues with the actual platform itself, so it's always worth updating your BIOS. So some things you're going to need, obviously, you're going to need the motherboard itself, a platform to actually do it on. You can, if you want to, do this in a fully built PC. The choice is entirely up to you. I prefer if I've bought some parts to do it with the board just on its own, just to start with, just to confirm that the board is A-OK -okay before we start assembling all the other things, putting the processor on, RAM, etc., etc. You will also need an ATX power supply suitable for your platform. I'm using uh, this little SFX one from Thermaltake. You will need two connections if it's a modular power supply, one of which it's going to be your main 24 pin power connection which fits on the motherboard on the far side by the ram and also there is the 8 pin eps which fits into the connection which is normally at the top left hand corner of the motherboard on this particular board there's two connections you can if you want to connect to both the choice is entirely up to you but really you only need to do one and it doesn't matter which one you do both of them will send adequate power through Something else you're going to need is a USB drive. Now, ideally, it needs to be under 32 gigabytes in size because we do have to format it in the FAT32 file system. Also, we will need access to a working PC with preferably Windows on it so we can go to the MSI website, download the BIOS, extract the file because it will be a compressed file. Then we need to actually rename the file to something the motherboard can actually recognize. But other than that, that's pretty much it. So let's head over to the computer now. We'll prepare this drive, get the BIOS file, do all the things we've just mentioned, and then we'll get ready to flash the BIOS itself. So this is our Windows 11 desktop. So let's uh, quickly put in our USB drive into the computer. And this one's actually got a previous BIOS on there. So what we're gonna do is just for the sake of it, we're gonna actually format this drive. So select your USB drive, which is this one here. I'm gonna right click on it and choose format. And we want it to be FAT32, so it's already that, that's absolutely fine. Allocation size will set to default, and if there's anything in the volume label section, we can remove that. When you're happy, click on start, but don't forget, this will erase everything which is on the drive itself. And if you've actually got a drive which is larger than 32 gigabytes, we have done a separate video which will show you how to create a smaller FAT32 partition on that drive, but really, I would suggest, for compatibility's sake, try to get a drive which is 32 gigabytes or less. So with that said, let's click on start we'll get the message come up saying that it's going to erase the drive. That's absolutely fine because it's old BIOS that we don't need. So we're going to click OK. And there we go. Our format is now completed. So that is the drive prepared. So we can close that down. So let's now head over to the MSI website to get our BIOS file. So here we are. This is the website. I'll put links for this in the video description as well. So just make sure you get the right board because there's lots of variants of these boards on the market. I think there's actually going to be a Gaming Plus Max as well. But again, do make sure you've got the right one, just check the model name matches what you've got on your board. When you're happy, go over to the support section. And generally it'll come up to the BIOS page first of all, but if not, you've got the tabs here, so BIOS, driver, and utility. You can also, if you want to, go over to compatibility to see which BIOS version you actually need. Although, to be honest with you, I would suggest going for the very latest one, which at the moment is this one here. So the time of recording this is the 20th of the 12th, 2023. And the latest version was released at the beginning of November this year. So that's going to be absolutely fine. And it will tell you what has actually been updated on it as well. So that is excellent. So we know what's going on. So let's download this BIOS file. I'm going to actually save this to our Windows desktop, but you can save it to wherever you like. That shouldn't take very long at all. So we can now minimize this window because we don't need that anymore. And we can go and have a look at our file. So this is a compressed file. So it will need unzipping or extracting. To do that, we're going to right click on it and we're going to choose extract all. And then it's going to ask us to select a destination for this extracted file or folders. And we're going to choose the desktop, click on extract. And you may find that the window opens automatically. So here is our folder. So if we look inside our folder, you'll see there are two files. One is a text file, which will give you an explanation of what has changed in the BIOS and we have the actual BIOS file itself. This one here, 32,000 kilobytes in size, so 32 megabytes, which is what we're expecting to see. Currently it's listed as an H2.0 file, 
So we need to change that to a msi.rom file. If for some reason you can't see file extensions, you can click on view, go down to show, and choose file name extensions. So you can see file name extensions. When you're ready, click on the file until you get it highlighted like that. And then we can remove all of this. And we're just gonna type in MSI and a full stop or period, then ROM for ROM, and then press enter. We're gonna get a message saying that the file type is changing. That's absolutely fine. Yes, we do want to change it because that is what the motherboard requires. So click on yes. And there we go, there is our ROM file ready for us. So now we can put this onto our USB drive. So highlight it, you can choose copy or cut, either one of those, or you can right click on it. You can choose it that way. So I'm gonna do cut. Then we're gonna go over to our prepared USB drive and then we can click on paste. And there we go, there is our ROM file, msi.rom, 32 megabytes in size. So now we can eject this drive, click on there. And now we can take the drive out of the computer and go over to our little test bench. So now we've got our USB stick armed with our latest BIOS. So we can put this into the back of the computer or the, the motherboard here. So there is a little section here. You'll probably see a closer version of this. So the BIOS flashback USB port is highlighted or there is a kind of grayed out section around it. So we're just gonna plug that into the back there. The BIOS flashback button is right next to it. So that's uh, very easy to locate. Power supply is connected up to the mains, but currently is in the off position. And that is it, we're pretty much ready to go. I've already plugged in the EPS and the 24 pin power connector. So that is pretty much it. So now we can turn on our power supply and now we're ready to flash the BIOS. So what I normally tend to do is to press and hold the BIOS flashback button for about three seconds, or at least until you see some type of activity going on here. What we're looking to see is the USB drive being red, first of all, so you'll see the flashing LED for the BIOS flashback system flashing, then it should change speed. Then once it's finished doing that, it will transfer the BIOS to the motherboard, it will change speed again. And we're looking at the very end for the whole system to shut down and the BIOS flashback LED to turn off. If for some reason yours doesn't do any of that and it just flashes a couple of times and then stops, it basically means that it either cannot read the USB drive or potentially you've got the wrong file for the motherboard or possibly the BIOS file is not in the right format or you've not typed in msi.rom or it's still seeing some other file extension. So anyway, with that away, let's press the button and we'll see what happens. So one, two, three, and release. And you can just about see very slightly, there is a little bit of flashing going on there. I've just heard the power supply click to the on position. So now what we wanna do is just leave the system. You'll also probably see that from the back here, if I twist that around possibly, you should be able to see, you know, there's a red LED there for CPU because we haven't got a CPU connected. That again is absolutely fine. So hopefully you can just about see the LED is flashing in there. What we wanna do, just leave this alone now. It should take somewhere between five to six minutes to complete the entire task. If it goes on longer than that, then the chances are it hasn't worked at which point you can just turn off your power supply and repeat the process again. If again, like I said, it stops flashing after maybe five, six flashes, then just go solid red, it's basically not reading the USB or the drive. So I'm pretty happy this is going through what it needs to do. So I'm gonna give you a close up now of the back LED so you can see what it looks like when it's flashing. Then the next thing you'll see is us back when this is hopefully finished. Okay, so there we go, the, there was a noise there, a little bit of a click, and the light has now gone off on the BIOS flashback button. The system has tried to reboot itself by the looks of things, and we're currently now with the, uh, the CPU LED on there and the power supply is on. So what we can do now is turn off the power supply and we can carry on doing the rest of our build and then do any necessary testing, or if you've got your pre-built system or your fully built system ready, you should be good to go. So like I said, the system is basically done. We've got our CPU LED on, the BIOS LED has stopped flashing, so that's great news. So now literally we just turn off the power supply and we'll find in a few seconds the red LED will go out. You hear the click of the power supply, etc. You can then remove your USB drive. You don't need that any longer. And then again, you can go ahead, put your processor on, put your RAM on, put your GPU on, etc. Do 
a test, make sure that everything is okay and that it posts, all that kind of stuff. And then you can do your full build if you want to. Again, if it's already in your PC, you've got it fully assembled, then you pretty much should be good to go. And your new CPU should be recognized by your motherboard. If for some reason it doesn't, then please feel free to reach out in the comment section or alternatively, you want a faster reply. And we do have a Discord chat server, which is free of charge to join. Just come in, say hello, and we will try and do our best to uh, answer your questions and fix any problems you may have. I think that's going to wrap this video up. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and the chime icon, and that way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.